Welcome back to Swam course on design thinking and innovation. Uh, this is week 12. We are moving on to the tool section. Uh, what you saw it in the process section, we are going to do a bit more details so that you can make use of these tools in your projects in the next section. So, it is section T12, week 12. So, again uh, all these are tools, minimum viable product, proof of concept, information architecture and experience design. So, let us look at minimum viable product MVP. So, we have gone through this in the previous section. Uh, it is a simple version of the product that you are doing, so that you can test it out and get feedback from the users. Okay, and helps it, you to do it very quickly without spending a lot of money okay, and efforts. Okay, so, uh, the first example we saw was from Marpo, where they used a four model with detachable units. So, that you can actually give it to the you know children and get the feedback on it. Okay, so, this is not a working prototype, but it is a simulated prototype, but it looks and feels like the original. So, they can actually you know give you some feedback on what the idea is and you will see that they actually have liked that idea very much. Okay. Here actually is another prototype uh, for an interactive exhibition. Okay. So, this is the minimum viable product uh, made out of cardboard uh, paper. It is a simple version uh, based on coward that means multiple stories are hidden behind these doors and the, uh, the student needed to get feedback from users whether you know the users were children uh, whether uh, it is a good idea or not and uh, she got feedback, but finally, she went with something else than this, but it was a good feedback uh, you got. Okay. So, this is another person especially during COVID okay, there was a need to carry medicines all the time and for people who have chronic illnesses you know you need something which you can carry with you. So, this is the you know rough design of it, it is a paper prototype of it which you can actually hang it or put it into your pocket. Okay. So, it has to facilitate that. Okay. So, it is made out of you will see that it is made out of cardboard paper okay. and you can tuck it inside your bag or uh, you know next to your skirt. Okay. And uh, person got extremely good feedback on this and people wanted something like this. So, if you look at the steps in this, uh, you need to select the concept that you want to actually do an MVP. Okay. Uh, you need to write down the most important aspects of it, so that you can detail out it and there are many ways you can do it. Okay. You can use foam, cardboard, plaster, softwood or for 3D products and cardboard printouts, cutouts for 2D products, wireframes, low fidelity prototypes it's on paper, figma for digital prototypes. and uh, if it is interactive, you can use Arduinos or sensors for interactive prototypes, right. Also make the prototype such that it has enough features and functionality to get a feedback and give it to the users and get feedback from them and then decide what to do next. Okay, so, that is uh, minimum viable product. Let us move on to proof of concept POC. Uh, as the name suggests, it kind of demonstrate the feasibility of the idea. You know, there is something new that you thought of, I know I better test it out before I go ahead with that, okay, with the feedback from the users. Okay. So, POC is great for testing the functional or technical or material aspects of the concept. Again, it saves you time, efforts and costs okay, and uh, making sure that this new idea can work. Okay. So, basically trying it out before it is adopted as part of the final design. Okay. Uh, yeah. It helps you to quickly visualize, test and get feedback and change or iterate in order to make the next version of it. Okay. So, some examples this we have seen before a POC mock up of this version uh, that helps you test it out. Okay. And again uh, this he did not go through 
uh, with the final design he took another version of it. So, if you look at the steps in it ok you need to select again the concept you want to do a prototype and try it out as a POC version and you can again use multiple methods to make the POC make the prototype and get feedback from the users. It is very simple ok and it is very helpful to make sure that do you want to go ahead with that or do you want to try out something else ok. Uh, move on to the next section uh, information architecture. Uh, we mentioned this before it is important when the when there is communication of information and it is of very importance to your design then structuring it organizing it is very very helpful ok. So, uh, so that it makes it easy for you to locate a particular piece of information ok and then uh, navigate towards that ok and that also makes it easy to understand ok and yeah. So, it has wide applications from websites to control panels to signage systems to you know museum and library and catalog and directories yeah this we have seen before ok. And you have seen that it can be used in all these domains and it plays a very important role uh, in actually organization of the information within these ok. So, again reading out digital interfaces, control panels, wayfinding systems, museum layouts, store layout, public places, directories and library layouts ok. So, you will see that uh, there is a need for organizing the information, putting it into categories, having an index or catalog, uh, doing a navigation system having a signage system to locate it, uh, use arrows for direction. Uh, so, these are some of the common things, but depends exactly on what exactly you are trying to do ok. So, an example of it being used uh, for uh, you know website uh, on calligraphy learning of calligraphy ok. So, it has uh, a learning of calligraphy on one side and lots of case studies and examples from masters of calligraphy on the other side and uh, their catalog categorized and uh, very easy to navigate within the web space itself. Another example of it ok. So, this is the, the architecture of the interface for the Jello uh, application uh, which is actually meant for children who are not able to speak ok. So, uh, the words are replaced by icons or images. So, when you touch the icon actually it speaks it out to them. Uh, so, this is the categorization of the different uh, icons according to different activities. Uh, you can see that places, greet and feel, time and weather, health section, fun section, learning section, their friends and uh, you know uh, people section, the uh, eating section and the daily activity section. So, this is the you know very broad information architecture of uh, Jello. Yeah, so, if you look at the steps in uh, organization of information first you have to categorize the information into different groups based on similarities ok or uh, you know. So, so that uh, they all come under you know certain groups ok and, uh, and then you have to decide the how it should flow uh, you know how will you decide the navigation from what it should go what should be next ok. And uh, for you know applications of wayfinding is best to do a walk through through that place and decide the points where you need to make decisions uh, because you will understand that is the points where you actually need information or signages ok. And then you make a rough prototype you in a paper prototype put it out get feedback from the users and see if it works or not ok. So, we will move on to the next section which is experience design. Uh, experience design as we mentioned is uh, design of products both physical and digital service systems to facilitate easy understanding satisfying engagement and good experiences ok. In each one of them easy understanding means it is very easy to locate understand navigate and make use of it ok. Satisfying engagements it feels good to interact uh, it works well a uh, good experience is comfortable memorable ok. You, so, you want to come back and uh, use it again yeah. 
So, we looked at uh, these examples uh, in the previous section a ceiling fan, okay, a grinder mixer, a knee mail application all of them uh, meant certain things a ceiling fan uh, that recognizes your presence, sets the speed according to the temperature, makes no noise and switches off when you leave the place is an extremely you know experiential uh, you know device you almost do not feel the presence of it, but you feel good about it. Uh, even a grinder mixer which can actually make no noise uh, where you can set from you know fine to rough grinding okay, and you can switch it on and it will switch it off and make a sound when it is off uh, is a much better experience than the present ones. An email application uh, by the way the email comes lets you know who it has come from you know it shows by its expression whether it is a happy email or whether it is a complaining email okay it says whether it is from a friend stranger workplace okay uh, and uh, it, it makes use of icons colors and other things to make it really visible and expressionable okay. So, just three instances of it okay we have seen that okay we also compared scenario one of you going to the bank. Uh, the traditional one which takes a lot of time and effort as against another one uh, where you can do the same function of trying to get a loan for a laptop much more easy and smoother. So, the ex second experience is uh, much much better than the first one we are repeating this again, but if you look at uh, experiences of what happens in a place of worship or uh, when you go to a restaurant with friends and have a good time or you know when you are celebrating a festival you will see that actually you make use of all your sensories and yeah. So, they are all involved in actually giving you a good experience and so the big question is that can I actually use these you know uh, sensory experiences when I am actually designing a product or a service. Okay, so, if you look at the steps in experience design uh, you need to do a step by step walkthrough of all the sensory interactions with the product or service. While doing this note down all the decision making points okay, uh, decide how many of the senses or how the senses can actually be involved in uh, interacting with the concept and uh, then make a rough prototype and get feedback on this and if it works well go ahead with that. So, these are the prototype part 2 okay. we saw minimum viable product, we saw how to do proof of concept POC, we also saw how you can do information architecture IA and finally, the experience design of it. Uh, thank you so much for listening uh, this was T 12 week 12 uh, just a summary of the week 12 uh, we did the process. Uh, we just done the tools with respect to MVP, proof of concept, information architecture and experience design. We will now apply it in the project and then have a look at the case study.